what's up you guys so I just wanted to basically let you guys know in this video that you're about to watch you know how I've been doing how my feelings have now keep in mind I did record this video a couple of weeks ago you know and I just feel like I'm not sure if it's the holidays or not but you know I have been going through just a lot of changes you know with my son passing and all and um I'm just really trying to get through this and I do appreciate all the love and support that I have been getting over the past few months um never realized it was going to be this hard um never even thought about it being hard I you know I just never realized that my life would be destined for this outcome so it's really hard um today is December 17th and um it's been a hard few weeks for me lately, you know. I'm not really in the Christmas spirit mood. You know, I've been trying. I have decorated. I've decorated my son's room. He has a Christmas tree in there. And, um, you know, today, to the, today, this morning, I went to the uh, funeral home where his services was. And I picked out an urn for him, you know because it came basically in the urn that they give you through the funeral services and I just wanted to find the right one and I actually really did and I'll hopefully remember to pop a picture in you know it more or less the urn was um it reminded me of this song that he loved that I loved by Troop Spread My Wings and Fly Away so old school my son was so old school but um yeah I wanted just to share how I'm doing with you guys. So, you know, I'm just going to get into the video because the video is, like, you know, a real talk video long, okay? And um, I just wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you all have a great holiday. I seriously do, you know. Um, and I, I, I will too. You know, I, I have my family around. But um, I've just been having a rough time over the past <clears throat> few weeks. I, it feels like I'm just reliving everything. And, um, I know a lot of people have emailed me and asked me, you know, how I've been doing and I just day by day. So this morning was really hard for me, you know, um, I was in a lot of tears, but I got through it and I got him two urns. One is a smaller one for my son and, um, in New York's and, um, I also have this today now. So I can have him with me wherever I go, which he always was anyway. But um, it's his ashes are in here too. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I see you. What's up, you guys? So today's video is going to be a get ready with me. I'm about to do a couple of videos, some wig videos, of course. I really need to catch up, but I figured while I was doing my makeup that I will just chit chat with you guys and give you an update on what I've been going through, how I've been progressing. Um, just not even drama, but some things that a website has done um, that is really disrespectful to my family. Um, just, you know, an update. And I figured the best way to do it is to just chit chat with you guys while I was doing my makeup. And I got to get my hair ready. I just wear my hair out. Um, finally, I haven't worn my hair out in forever, but I started wearing my hair out a lot like three months ago. And I was just trying to save my edges and my hairline. So thank God I did. And they are growing back like a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I notice when I have the wig on for too long, it starts to get a little bit red around the edges. So I definitely just take them off after I'm finished wearing them or after the video. Definitely after the video because I always do more than one video. But sometimes like the one that I just decide to keep, um, I'll keep it on. But I can't even do that because I just get really, really hot from my hormones. And the patches that I've been um, prescribed, they don't work at all. I've been taking... Um, and my room um some soy pills and they seem to work a little bit i got them off of amazon and they're for estrogen um for females and um that's just about it um i finally purchased some new makeup um the other day when i dropped my daughter nay off to, to work she works at the tanger outlets here in glendale so 
they finally opened up a cosmetic st outlet store. I was so happy because in New York and New Jersey at the outlets, I would always go to the cosmetics company, you know, outlet store. And when I moved here six years ago, when I went to the outlet near me, I realized they didn't have one. And I was kind of like bummed out by that. So when I went to take her to work um, last Saturday, I was walking through the outlet and um, lo and behold, they had the store just open that day so i went in and i got a few things um and then i went back like two days later and got a couple more things some of the items might be last season they have a 75 percent off clearance section which is called last chance and then all of the makeup is 40 to 50 percent off of retail value so you may get some items that are like a few months old or last season or whatever but who even cares because it's just makeup it all looks the same I'd rather pay half the price than full so I got this Smashbox uh, centering citrus primer water it's the photo finish let me tell you I used it yesterday and it works so good I really like it I wasn't too too happy with the scent but I paid seven five five dollars for this and I got the matte um prep and prime which i gave half of it or some of it to my daughter tati and i like it but the one that i thought i grabbed for was the matte one and it wasn't so i just kept it because it still works really good i got this here which is the mac shiny pre thing space compact and it just comes with a bronzer a blush and a highlight which i like them all this doesn't really show up like that but you know i guess i don't really need it too dark i also got this here by mac oh this this was $17, this was seven, this was $7 because it was 75% off. And this is just the iridescent, iridescent, golden bronze, iridescent, iridescent, iridescent powder, loose powder. So it's like a bronzy color. It's really pretty. Seven bucks, you cannot beat that. Um, I also got two of these, but one is a little bit different. I got this highlighter right here from MAC, which is their Snow Flushed. This is like a prettyish pink color and I have to show you the other one that I got so this is what it looks like was $14 plus I got a 15% discount because my daughter works at the mall which took off five dollars and 25 cents so it ended up being um cheaper than $14.87. I also got this one which was a lot cheaper. It was like seven bucks because it was on 75% off. This one is the Old Darling and it kind of reminds me of the color in the little palette I showed you. This is what it looks like. Then I got the Estee Lauder Set Blur Finish Perfecting Powder in the color medium and this here was $38 and I had a 50% off, which made it $16.15. And then I got another 15% off, which took off an additional $5.70. Then I got the Born This Way Concealer by Too Faced, and I've been wanting this forever, okay? So I got this in the color light medium, and this was um, $28. I got it for 50% off, which made it $11.90. Then I got an additional $4.20 off for the 50% since my daughter worked at the Tanger Outlets, which is a deal breaker. Okay, this is the kicker right here. Now listen, I don't ever wear red lipstick. You guys already know that. So they had these little MAC lipsticks. Now these are smaller because this is the original size. And all they had this in was the color Ruby Vu. And I've been wanting to try that forever, but you know, MAC lipsticks are not cheap. So I didn't want to buy one and didn't like the color because red is so hard for me to put on. So this was only five bucks and I wore it yesterday. And it took me a minute to put it on, but it came out nice. I actually love it. My husband was like, oh, you should wear that for you know what this will last me a minute because i don't really wear red lipstick like that so you guys i'm gonna get my hair situated um for one let me just tell y'all i have lost a lot of weight since you know as you guys know my son passed away my middle child who was 21 he passed away august 4th and um i have been going through a lot since then i have lost I had lost a lot of weight. I went from like 199 to 187 really quick. And I didn't really like the weight loss, but you know, I take the good with the bad. And then when I started deciding to eat again, I just blew up. I started eating like everything, anything and everything, all types, all times of night. And so I ended up gaining like 
all my weight back plus some so now I weigh 202 two days ago I was 205 um, you know I did start working out again and then I stopped for a minute because my mom came to visit for two and a half weeks so I didn't want to take any time away from her plus she wanted to go out to eat a lot to the buffets and shit so you know, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have a good time with my mother. I'm not going to worry so much because for the moment, I was somewhat happy. You know, I have bad days every single day. You know, she was here in August for my son's ceremony, his um, celebration of life ceremony. And um, she was here for a week with my sister. And um, she came back again to stay with me for a while. And, you know... I would just wish that she would just stay with me for good because she just she's older she's 65 she needs to be around me where I can take care of her you know what I mean and I feel like not not nothing wrong with where she's at but I just you know I just want her close to me so that I could take care of her I could take her to work because she still wants to work she doesn't want to sit in the house and do anything so she only works like a couple of days a week but it takes her like two hours to get to work which is 10 miles away I really don't want her having to travel that far she works like until like 10 o'clock 11 o'clock at night so some of the times when she doesn't get a ride home or she doesn't want to take public transportation I will make sure that she gets a lift home you know I'll pay for her lift and everything but I just want her to be around me because she seems at her most happiest when she's around me we have a lot in common we do things together and I'm really happy for the relationship but I get so sad when she leaves you know what I'm saying but you know I was so happy for her to be here with me so I was able to spend time with her. It's not that I don't want to be big. I like my size, trust me. I just don't like my, my belly. That's the one thing that I don't like. And after my hysterectomy, it seemed like it just got worse. I'm just really self-conscious about that. Other than that, I like everything else. Like me as a person, how I'm feeling right now. Like I said, I have good days and I have bad days. Like seriously, I have some days that are just so hard for me that I can't even deal with it. And I know some people are probably like, because I have read comments like, oh, why'd you come back to YouTube so early? Um, YouTube, uh, it's not like you need the money, blah, blah, blah. You, you need to grieve. How do you guys know, for those who said that, how do you know I'm not grieving? You know what I'm saying? You don't know that. You don't really know what I go through on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm not on camera. What you see on camera is me, you know, performing or not even performing but you know what I'm saying doing a hair tutorial you don't know if I've cried you know saying before the video during the video that's what editing is for you know what I'm saying I, I I had decided to come back to YouTube this is the reason why I decided to come back to YouTube for one it gets really hard sitting around the house not doing anything all day long you know i played the games on my phone and in the midst of playing these video games these games on my phone these you know these little house decorating games you know i've spent money on you know spent money on them and stuff like that so it's like you know i i just got tired of sitting around eating and i just needed to keep myself busy and my outlet is doing my youtube videos you know, and not only that, but it just helps me be able to communicate with people and, you know, just be able to talk and voice how I feel and also makes me feel good. It makes my son proud. You know, Wuzzle was everything to me, my son who passed away. He was everything just as well as all of my kids are. But, you know, sometimes we would clash, but even though through the midst of clashing, we still had a really strong bond and I would get upset with him at certain things because as a parent, you you expect more from your children. You want them to be okay in life. You want to raise them to do the right thing. So that way when they're on their own, they can do this without your help, your assistance, and you worrying about them. So, you know, when I see my kids do things that I don't approve of or that's not really good or safe for them, of course I'm going to say something. And you know with kids, they always feel like they know everything, which is not true. And as parents, we may feel like we know everything at times, but we don't. You know what I'm saying? We don't. But that that's with the good and the bad. There's mistakes, and everybody is accountable for their mistakes. And we work through them as a family. So, you know, we clashed at times. Not all the time. Just once in a while. He was very respectable to me always. You know, we would never argue or anything like that. 
and I miss him so much. Like, I just want you guys to know that I'm okay. You know, I just take things every day at a time. And it seems like, I don't know, one minute I could be good and like, not 100% happy, but just like happy enough to wear to get me through the day. You know what I mean? But then I have my moments when I, I'm driving and I'm listening to music and I know it's something that he likes or he would have liked. I start zoning out and it's not that I'm daydreaming, but I just start to zone out. I've had almost an accident like that because I just be thinking so hard. And at times, you know, I just burst into tears while I'm driving. So it's hard and you know, it's not just hard for me, but it's hard for my family. The one of my kids that I think that is affected the most, that I know is affected the most, is my eldest son, Jerron, who is also known as Hollywood Shumpo. He's the rapper. He's the one who, you know, he just did a show with um, Little Baby. Um, I think that's how you say their name. Look, I don't even know. Sweetie. Um, what's that girl named? Megan. Meg the Stallion. Um some other baby, little baby, the baby, yeah, and Johnny Two Phone. So he just did a, like a, a concert tour with them, and he was the opening act. And I'm very proud of him for that. Him and his brother was were really close. They were like best friends. So I know that this is affecting my son a lot because he tells me every day, and his reactions to the world are a little bit different now. You know. He's kind of like he doesn't want to talk to anyone. And you know something? I can relate to how he feels because I have shut people out as well. And it's not that I'm doing it intentionally, but it's like I don't really know what to say to you. I don't really have a conversation for you unless it pertains to my child. So, you know, and I don't really want to burden people with my feelings and my hurt. So I have kind of like shut people out and it's not like I said done intentionally. It's just that, you know, I, I just, sometimes people don't understand if you haven't gone through it, you don't understand what I'm going through. You know, I have gotten messages from people on Instagram saying that they understand what I'm going through because they had a miscarriage at a couple of months. You don't understand. It's not the same thing. I've had two miscarriages and trust and believe the first one I had, I was very depressed. The second one I was somewhat, but you cannot compare uh, a miscarriage after a month or so um, to someone who has actually lost a physical living child. It's not the same. It's definitely not the same. And so things like that, I just try to shut myself away from because I don't want to be rude and say, please don't compare your feelings and your hurt to mine because we're not on the same level of hurt. And it's stuff like that that has made me kind of like distance myself from people only because I just don't sometimes want to talk about it and I just sometimes don't want to relive it sometimes to me that's like reliving it so I just try to you know not keep to myself but and definitely not keep my feelings in because I have my mom and my husband and my kids who I can open up to but you know it's hard at times because it hurts it's a painful painful hurt that I really can't explain and I wouldn't wish it on anybody. In the midst of that, it has, you know, it has taken a lot from me. Um, you know, I go to therapy and stuff and um, that has been helping somewhat. You know, she allows me to voice my opinions and she also allows me to, to feel the way I feel and lets me know that there's nothing wrong about the way that I feel and how I'm grieving. It's a process, and I understand that, but, you know, sometimes you just get so tired of hurting. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you get tired. I like, I get, I get tired of hurting. I get tired of crying. I just, I get tired. And it's not like I'm trying to forget my son, but I just get tired. I get, I get tired of the pain. You know what I'm saying? And I get tired of feeling the way I feel. And so it's not that I try to avoid it, but I try to avoid it to the part where I don't really want to open up too much to someone, especially not my immediate family. But um, listen, 
This is like the worst journey that I've ever had to go through in my life. This is the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. So I try to take it like a grain of salt and I try to deal with it on a daily basis every day. You know what I'm saying? I talk to my son every single day. His room is still intact. You know, um, I go in there. I light him a candle every night. And I've been doing this since he passed. And I will tell you guys this, that I have gotten through it a lot with the help of you guys. You know, your messages and stuff. But this, this shit is hard. You know what I'm saying? It's very hard. I think the hardest part for me is during the daytime because I'm here basically alone. And normally my son would be here. Because he worked in the afternoon, so he would be here with me and we'd be up laughing. Sometimes he'd be asleep, but I knew that he was here and I was never alone. And so now my house is like extra quiet and it just doesn't feel right, you know? It just really doesn't feel right at all. But I am trying to work my way through this. And I know some people don't believe in spirits and stuff, but I have this strong feeling that he is here his presence is here and he's watching over me because when I have like those really really bad days within minutes one of his friends that I haven't heard from in a couple weeks hey I was just texting to make sure you was okay checking on you I felt like Jalen wanted me to reach out to you this is an always thing okay one night I was crying and um my Wuzzle's, Jalen's friend, you know I call him Wuzzle, Wuzzle's friend, one of his friends, well, one of his friend's mother, she she hadn't reached out to me for over a month. And this was like two weeks ago I was crying. This is when this happened. It's about two weeks ago. And um, Wuzzle's friend, his Wuzzle's friend's mom, she, in the beginning, she would text me a lot because she too had lost a child. And <coughs> it's not... <coughs> Oh my God. It's not his best friend, um, Josh, that passed away. Um, it, it's his, his other friend. I never met this guy, this kid. He was older. So it wasn't really Wuzzle's friend. It was his friend's brother. He had gotten murdered. And this was a year ago. And so I hadn't heard from her for over a month, you know? So two weeks ago, I'm sitting here, and I'm in tears, and I'm crying, and I'm asking God why. And, like, about 10 minutes later, I get this text message. She didn't say hello or anything. Just just texting me, God, God, God has you. God knows how you feel. And that was it. And it was so strange. Like, you didn't text me in over a month. You didn't even say hello in a text. This is all you said. And she's a very spiritual woman. She goes to church every week. You know, I know, I already felt that he had, you know, his friends looking over me or him watching me and having his friends text me. But this message that she gave me solidified it. And then there were a couple after that too, not from her, but from different people. Like a few days later when I was having like another breakdown. So I know that he's here with me in spirit and in my heart, but I just miss him so much that I'm not good with just that. I need him here. And it's hard when, you know, you just don't know what to do with yourself. I know I told you guys about his friend Josh, his best friend Josh, that had passed away um, back in May, on May 3rd. And they were like brothers, you know. Josh was the best. I love Josh. You know, he was like my son from another mother. He was, Josh was white, as you guys know, and I couldn't even tell because I don't look at people that way. He was a wonderful kid. He was wonderful. And, you know, we was at his service, me and my son and my husband. And when I had my son's celebration of life service on August 15th, Josh's dad showed up. I spoke to him then at the, um, at the time, I did speak to him at the funeral, my son's funeral. Well, about a month and a half ago, I decided to stop by, you know, Josh's parents' house. 
um, his father's house. His mother and his father were, you know, separated, divorced. And um, I decided to go over there and just to check on him too. And now they also live right here where I live at in Garden Lakes. What was so weird about the whole situation when I first met Josh, my home number, the number of my house is 11317 and so is Josh's, but they just live, you know, in the other part of Garden Lakes. I go over to ring the doorbell at Josh's parents' house. They they have um, one of those um, doorbells with the cameras on them. I'm on the camera, nobody answers. So I decided to leave a note and just say, you know, it's me, Jalen's mom. That day I had got a phone call from Josh's mother. She has been staying there since, you know, Josh's passing. And um, she called me, reached out to me. So we've been, you know, communicating a lot with each other. We speak to each other every day. We go on early morning walks together. So, you know, it, it, I'm glad that she and I have become friends because our sons were best friends. They were brothers, like brothers. I've been just trying to basically just come to terms with things. You know, it takes some time. Um, I don't do videos. I don't post videos every day now. I don't want to overwhelm myself. And also, you know, posting videos every day was a lot of work. You know, it was very time consuming and I would be up late, you know, so, and I was always feeling like I needed to rush, rush, rush. And after, you know, returning back to YouTube after my son's passing, you know, my two and a half month break or three month break, I realized, listen, if I don't get the video up, I don't get the video up. And just being able to work and do this stuff allows me just to, to stay busy. So that way, you know, I don't, um, get in a slump and think too hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to think too hard. So I try not to think too hard about shit. So that's the reason why I like to, you know, be able to come back to YouTube and just do my videos. So that way I'm not thinking too hard. I have been getting through things. I um sent a lot of my son's clothing to my eldest son in New York. You know, and um, I just try to get through it day to day. But the part that pisses me off is the fact that, oh, you know, what people have to say about me or my family, you know, it is a, it doesn't even really piss me off like that, to be honest. It just basically shows me that people can be so fucking evil or just not even mindful, not even, or ungrown, you know what I'm saying? That's my word, I'd have been made that up. I used to say that shit to my son Wuzzle all the time, but they could be just so ungrown and just show no respect to people at times, you know what I'm saying? Especially during like times of like these. I'm like not really bothered by the fact that people have wrote that on my videos or have messaged me that I should, you know, I should grieve or, you know, like it's crazy because just because you see a person on camera does not mean that you freaking know they ass like that. Does not mean you know them. Okay? Just because you see a person on camera does not mean that you personally know them or their lifestyle or anything about what they're going through. Just be mindful of what people, you know what I'm saying, are going through in life. Don't assume because you see them on camera and they appear to be happy that they freaking happy and they not going through nothing you know don't 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 assume and this is the, the thing that i get irritated by with with people you assume that because you see them that they're not grieving or they're happy and basically they okay and then you you find it that it's okay for you to you know start saying shit like, don't assume because y'all see me on video that I'm great, okay? Please don't assume that. And that goes just not even just for me, but for anybody or any YouTuber or anybody that you watch a video. Y'all, you know, y'all may know somewhat about our lives, you know, if we feel the need to share it with you guys. And the part that I share with you guys, I have no problem sharing because I'm not ashamed of who I am. 
or anything like that. I'm definitely not ashamed of my family. I just don't like the assumptions, okay? So don't feel like, oh, well, because I'm back to YouTube, I don't need the money, or um, I, I'm not grieving, or, you know? And I can't even imagine having to spend the rest of my life without one of my kids, okay? I can't imagine that. I, I would never want to ma imagine that. And like I told you guys before, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. This feeling that I have and this this sometimes hate that I have in my heart because of this, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, this feeling. Because it's a feeling that, you know what I'm saying, you have to not only live with the rest of your life, but you have to learn to deal with it to the point where it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like hate. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't feel like resentment. It doesn't feel like remorse. You know, you don't feel bitter. You have to work on getting past that so that you can turn it around. And that way, that feeling that you have to live with for the rest of your life, it may still hurt you. But at least it won't hurt you in the most negative way to where you walking around feeling angry all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I have my moments when I'm very angry and I feel like I hate the fucking world, all right? And then I have my moments where I guess because I'm so busy that I'm okay because I'm still thinking about my son throughout the day, all day long but I'm not thinking as hard, you know, as I would be if I were just sitting still, stagnant, not doing anything. So that's the one reason why I had to come back. It was, it started driving me crazy to the point where, you know, I just felt like I'm just gonna lose myself and this is gonna be my demise. And, and when I say my demise, I don't talk, of, I'm not referring to YouTube at all. I'm talking about my life in general. And I don't even necessarily mean I'm going to die. I could just get to the point into a black, dark hole where I just don't even care about anything and I'm just there to exist. You know what I mean? And nobody wants to feel that way. So instead of me having to feel that way, I think the best thing for me to do would be to just get back to my work. You know? Why is this eyebrow taking forever? Oh my God. This is pissing me off. It's always the right eyebrow for me that just gives me the worst problem, okay? Watch me have to take this off, and I'm going to just do this. You know what? Let me just do my eyebrows off camera because you guys will be like, God damn, girl, you've been sculpting your brows for like 20 minutes, okay? I had to do them off camera. It took me a minute, too, and I still don't really care for them too much, but we're just going to get through it. As I was, you know, scrolling through the internet, and I had just decided to Google my name one day. This was like about six, seven weeks ago. And um, this was before I came back to YouTube. And um, yeah, I had decided to Google my name because my mother was telling me, this was before my mom came, like a couple of weeks before my mom came. So she had sent me a screenshot of my Instagram page. So I was like, oh, you got Instagram now, you know? But she doesn't have any social media. And she was just like, no, she Googled my name. So anyway, I was like, well, let me see what she found when she Googled it. So, you know, I come up with, you know, websites for hair and stuff like that. And I see Makeup Alley. And it was a recent date because, you know, it was like in September. I click on it and it's a a post by them, you know, basically speaking about my son and how he passed away. I was reading some of the posts by like some of the people that be on this fucking website. You know, some of them was very sympathetic, you know, thank you very much for all of that. And then there was a couple, a few who was basically saying things that they didn't even know about because I didn't mention how my son passed away, that I'm prob it, it was probably either he it was a, either a suicide or an overdose, which was neither one of those. And I, you know, I was so pissed off because for one, I did say in the video, my son had seizures. He was out. What video I'm talking about is the video I did on an update. I did say in that video, you know, after my son passed away, um, 
basically that, you know, he was out with his friends. He was drinking. He had seizures. They let him go to sleep. Okay. So it was neither one of those or one. Then there were posts also about my daughter Tati, how something is wrong with her because she got real, she, she lost a lot of weight. It's like, oh my God, are you people just not happy with yourselves? Because a person loses weight, there has to be something wrong with them. They might be on all kind of drugs or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, where do people get off of assuming things? First of all, she's mad young, okay? So her metabolism is definitely not like mine. Second of all, I just don't like the disrespect. I found that to be very disrespectful to me and my family. And I did contact them about the post, you know what I'm saying? Because for one, don't go assuming shit. It was not only disrespectful, but to read it about my son was so hurtful. It was very hurtful to me. And I found that it was a disrespect, a huge disrespect to not only me and my family, but to most of all, my son who passed away. You know what I mean? And that's the sad part about it is that people just don't give two craps about others' feelings or privacy. As long as they could get something out of it, it doesn't matter if it's information, you know what I'm saying, gossip, they happy. You don't know how that could ruin someone's life, livelihood, them as a person. They don't know how that shit could have affected me when I read that. It was very hurtful to me and it made me very angry because for one, you don't know anything about what I've been going through or what my family is going through or what my son has gone through. I've mentioned that on numerous occasions about his constant seizures, okay? I, I think that sometimes some women be so dumbfounded. Like, if they wearing a wig, is the fucking wig squeezed too tight on their heads to where their brains are messed up? You know what I mean? Like, I find this, I find some, some people, not even just women, but people to be like, just stupid. Okay? Just basically stupid. And I say this because did somebody write on that post on Makeup Alley about my son? Well, it had to be an overdose or suicide because he was young. Only old people die. I said to myself, are you serious right now? Did this dumb fuck seriously write this and think this? That only old people can pass away? Like, who even thinks of something to say like that? But then that goes to show me the people that even bother to write stuff and be on Makeup Alley, they probably ain't got much sense know-how because that website is full of gossip and full of drama. And if anybody wants to feed into that shit all day long and thrive off of it, then definitely got to be something wrong with you because drama is one thing that I could care less about and I try to stay far away from, okay? I'm for one, too old for that shit. And for two, I like my life to be simple and easy. I don't need no extra nonsense in it, bringing up chaos and disrupting my home or my family. So I try to stay away from all the drama as much as possible, okay? Especially if it's involving me or trying to involve me. But I just was very hurt by the whole, you know, article and it just was like really, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, what is the right word to say? I was just very shocked, for one. I was very shocked and I was appalled and I more or less was like, wow, do people really like do things like this? Like actually thrive off of another person's heartache. But it was very hurtful to read that, you know? You could have said something about me, but just don't drag my son's name out. You know, let the dead rest in peace. want to tell you guys that I am okay. I just have to deal with this the best way I know possible, which is day to day. I'm not rushing anything, but like I said, I get tired of feeling hurt. And after a while, you just want all of that pain to go away. You just want it to go away. You know, you want you just want it all to go away, basically. I'd just be feeling like, damn, if I could turn back time, 
I would. You know, we try to teach our kids everything. We try to keep them safe. Sometimes I feel like I fail him as a person and as a mother because, you know, at that moment, I didn't keep him safe. And that's how I feel sometimes. I, I have a lot of guilt inside of me. I just try to deal with it the best way that I can. In case you guys are wondering what eyeshadow palette or eyeshadows I'm using, I'm actually using the Morphe, what is this one? The Morphe 35M Boss Mood Palette. I'm such a neutral girl, a neutral type of gal that I'll do a simple eye look and be happy with that shit for months to come. Like, you know what I mean? I don't like anything too dramatic, but I'm gonna try this eye look that I did yesterday. And I did a ponytail. I wasn't even going nowhere, you guys. And I was playing in the makeup. I just wanted to play in a new makeup that I got. You know, I hadn't gotten any new makeup that I purchased on my own in a while. So I just wanted to play in the makeup. And I did that, you know. So now I'm just gonna use this e.l.f. Uh, smudge pot. This is like really good. My daughter, Nay, you know, she's 17. She has a dance performance coming up um, this month. Um, she, choreo she choreographed the first portion of the dance, which I'm really proud of her because she tries so hard and she does so well in school. She will be graduating this year, so I'm really excited about that. Sorry, guys. Mumsy, she's just getting as tall as ever. And... You know, as for my relationship with my husband, we are doing so well. Um, you know, I'm really happy that we are back together. You know, it just makes me so happy because I truly do love this man, like with all my heart. And you know how you, you go through things in life with your, your loved ones or whatever. And you might separate. Sometimes we just got to grow up as individuals. We just got to grow up. You might have a disagreement here and there, but the relationship is like a million times better than what it used to be. Not saying that it was bad back then, because it never was. I mean, like certain times it was bad, only because, you know, he was, you know, drinking. But as far as now, you know, within, excuse me, as far as then, he was always a good provider. You know, he always, you know, made sure that we were taken care of and stuff. You know, he just had his issues, and I'm very proud of him, like I always say. Very, very proud of him for his accomplishments and, you know, trying so hard to be a good husband and a good father. So I'm very proud of him. Very, very proud of him. You know, but yeah, everybody has little disagreements here and there, but nothing to where it's like that major. You know, it just might be a little disagreement. But me as a person, I will tell you what. I have, you know, grown a lot. And I don't know if that's because he and I were separated, but I have learned to be a lot more patient and a lot more and communicate a lot better. Ooh, my eyeshadow looks like crap, but I don't even care. That's the one thing that I have realized with myself over the past few years that I've been, you know, away from him. I have been able to grow more as a person. The best that I could with this, um, eyeliner my eyes are so hooded so lately I've been putting on well <clears throat> excuse me I only have individuals on normally I have individuals and strips on like and I'll use the um I'll use this for the strips just so that way I don't have to put them on every day so they'll stay on for like two weeks but my eyelids are so hooded that I've been noticing that they make my eyes feel heavy and also, it just feels like to me that like my eyes have gotten lower. Yeah, since I came back to doing videos, um, oh my God, I have so many videos to catch up on. When I say many, I mean I have so many. I've been a lot of companies that, you know, were very, very sympathetic, basically not too worried about when their video was going to post. Then there was a couple that was very kind of like not understanding like after a week 
do you feel better now? Do you feel better now? Like, I don't think I'll ever feel better from this. Maybe I'll feel better because I'll be able to understand and I'll be able to process it more. And then I'll also be able to, you know, get through it more. You know, it's a process. So with those companies, I just basically chuck the wigs. Um, when I say chuck the wigs, meaning a bitch ain't doing nothing. This makeup job does not look that great today, I swear. When you're just doing your makeup because you just wanna do it and play around with it, it seems like it comes out real good. But then when you wanna do it for camera, well, this is just for me. I feel like it comes out real crappy, like it is right now. You know, yesterday seemed like it came out flawless, but I'm not gonna let this get me down. I wanted to do a few wig videos today, and that was my plans, so I decided, you know, I would just put my makeup on and talk with you guys. So, yeah. And I'm just using my phone to record. I look a little dry. I use the Rebecca, uh, Becca Cosmetic Skin Love Foundation. This is their Weightless Blur Foundation. I love this. The color that I have is Bamboo. And I also use that same color in like their foundation, their thicker foundation. For like my concealer under eyes and stuff, I'm gonna use the Becca Cosmetics Ultimate Coverage. So this is, I also use this in the color bamboo, but this one here is the color, I got my eyes, are so bad. Olive, it's too light for my skin tone to just put on my entire face, so I just use it as a light, a lightening, a brighter. Oh my God, my, my, my skin does not feel like it wants to work out for me today. I might not be doing no makeup video if I don't like the way this, I mean, excuse me, no wig tutorial video if I don't like the way this comes out on camera. And I really wanted to try out, oh wow. I really wanted to try out the, um, Too Faced one, but fix up this makeup look, okay? For real. So yeah, I was planning on doing three videos today, and for those who have been asking about when I'm gonna post some wigs up for sale, I will be very soon. I'm just, you know, I'm getting in the swing of things, and I basically want to post them all up at one time. So this is just the Sasha Buttercup. I don't really put it under my eye right there anymore because, girl, it'll have my eye looking so dry in that area. Hey, Tati. That's okay. What's up? Oh, oh, you just did? Now. Oh, I meant to tell you earlier too. Yeah, I just got my first time. So oh, oh you're welcome. Now I'm gonna dip into this palette by Mac, which is the Skinny Pretty palette. I'm gonna use the bronzer. So hopefully my makeup will come out good enough to where I will do some videos. I planned on doing three. And like I was saying, I will post up a sale soon. It doesn't really show up on my skin like that. Thank God for powder. Because I don't really like how that color is coming out. It's not coming out the way I would like for it to. And I'm going to still try to use it on my nose. Besides wig videos, I also have like some try-on hauls. But gosh, I don't even know if I could fit that stuff now. <laughs> because I put on the weight. Okay, so get this, okay? So I was putting on some strips, right? So I was at the Dollar Tree one day, not my favorite Dollar Tree where I find everything, but at this crappy one right around the corner from my house, like directly out once I leave Garden Lakes. So I went in there just to pick up something real quick because that's all you can get from there is just something real quick. You can't go in there and think you're about to get like a whole bunch of stuff because if you feel like you are, then honey, you gonna be misled and then you are gonna feel real disappointed. Oh, I'm so tired of the bags under my eyes. So anyway, I went in there and I seen, I, I don't even know why I went and checked out their makeup section, but it was early in the morning. So I went and I checked out their makeup section and but damn, did they have these lashes? These are by the brand, um, I, what is it? By the brand Lonnie, or is it an I? L-O-N-I Cosmetics. I'll put it here so you guys can see it. Hopefully you guys can see it. And hopefully it focuses. Um, 
But anyway, I looked it up and I don't think they're in existence anymore. But these were a dollar. They had like all different types of them. Um, I wish I would have got there when they first put them down. You know what I'm saying? For sale because a girl would have hooked, racked up. I was so shocked when I seen them. They had like four different styles, but these I've already wore a pair and they're really, really nice. I really do like them a lot. So at the Dollar Tree, you guys, now, first of all, they ain't got no more. I don't know. Um, you know, everybody's Dollar Tree is different. So, you know, don't expect to go to your Dollar Tree and find these because, girl, you might this just is not. as good as it's going to get for real because it is 2 o'clock now. And that means that there's no way that I can do a wig video because I have to pick Mumsy up at 3. I have to bring Nay to work at 5.30, you know, so won't be doing no wig tutorial today. This really took like over two hours with all the shit that I had to stop and go and keep redoing. So I'm definitely not going to be doing a hair tutorial this is not one of my favorites that I just bought, but I will dull it in. Yeah, I'll definitely not be doing a hair tutorial today, so tomorrow I guess I'll have to do it. And when I do it, I'll just do my makeup off camera so that way it ends up being a lot easier. But I just really wanted to do this video to talk to you guys and let you know what's going on, um, you know, with me my mama be back in February she said for a whole month I hope she does um, my third grandson he's gotten so big he can walk now my makeup looks really shitty today and it seems like whenever I try to do a video of my makeup it always comes out looking crappy so I'm like really disappointed in this entire look today like really so the only thing that I'm about to do now is you know, take my two cornrows out and put my hair back in a bun until tomorrow. So I did do a video with my mom while she was here. I'm happy to know that my son's presence is still with me. I think that helps me a lot in some days, not all the time, but some days, you know. it It's really hard as a parent losing a child and I never, thought that I would be a parent that had to go through this. So nothing in life is set in stone. And, you know, these things you just cannot predict. And as parents, we really wish that we, you know, could get through it and, and avoid it, you know, kind of like make sure that it doesn't happen. And that's the unfortunate part. And I just pray a lot. I pray a lot. I, I pray and I pray and I pray. I pray a lot. I talk to God a lot. And I just, you know, in the beginning, when this all occurred, I really didn't have, like, you know, a lot of faith. And I'll be honest and say I really didn't have a lot of faith. Um, but I just noticed that as time moved on that you know my faith became just uh, you know it came it became stronger and I had trust in God and in the beginning I was very angry at everything just at everything everything I was just very angry and just more or less very angry I just really didn't see how I was going to be able to get through this. And then there was a part of me that just didn't want to get through this. Like, I just didn't want to be here anymore. I just felt like there really wasn't a need for me. But then I had to stop and think, you know, like, I do have other children that depend on me. And it's just hard when you, you know and you realize that you have to live with something for the rest of your life. That's the part that makes it hard. And that's the part that really scares me a lot still. You know, I'm very scared about that. And I would be the first to admit that I'm afraid of, you know, having to live with this because of the pain. You have to be able to process things on your own. You have to be able to allow yourself to go through it. And for me, I think like sometimes I don't allow myself to go through it. This is like very life changing and I'm still, I, 
I think like when I have my bad days, those are the big days that I'm in shock because I, I look back and I think about it and to me it's shocking and I'm, and then I just can't believe that this is really happening or that I've lost my child and that's when it becomes like a shock to me and that's when I really break down the most and cry is because it has became a shock once again. And I don't really under know how to explain that, but I just try to process it as best as I can. These lashes are damn cute for a dollar. Despite the fact that the eyelash adhesive is this crap. This is the ponytail that I got from, oh my God, I can't even remember. It was like eight, nine years ago. I probably wore it a couple times, but you put your hair inside of it. So I had this on yesterday and it doesn't come with combs. You just put your hair inside of it. I am so mad that I wasn't able to do a wig video. So I was able to talk to you guys. I also want to thank you guys for just being there for me the way you guys have been. You know, all the love, the letters in the mail. Like, I was getting actual handwritten letters to my post office box and cards and stuff. And so that kept me going. And it also allowed me to see, like, okay, there are people out there that care about me, you know? So I want to thank you guys for that all the love and the support and i don't i'm so mad with this look today like so pissed off with this entire look today i think it's a form of disrespect of what i've seen on makeup alley this was the look for today it really wasn't supposed to be it was really supposed to be a wig tutorial several but you know what tomorrow will always come i'm not beat for doing it you know what i'm saying tomorrow will come and then you know maybe i have a better day um but yeah so, I love you guys. Thank you for just holding me down. Let me know what you think about this red lipstick that I have on. Like, it took me a minute to put this on too, girl. I had to put some foundation here. Like, I am definitely not good with red lipstick at all. Definitely not at all. Um, but, you know, I'll keep you guys posted on my feelings. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. And I will see you in a soon come video. Uh, uh,